Neil Huntley from Heartside Nursery Garden. Now, Neil, come over and let's see some of your plants and tell me, where do you actually grow them? Um, we're up in the North Pennines, so we have the reputation of being the highest nursery in the country. We're at about 1,050 feet. So uh, yesterday morning, I couldn't clean the plants as well as I would like to have done because they were all frozen. And today, if we go on the local webcam from the road that goes over from us in the Pennines across towards the Lake District in Penrith, um, there were several inches of snow on the sides of the road this morning. So, so yeah, we're the highest nursery in the country. And basically our reputation is, I grow the plants I like. Mountain plants, alpines, rock garden plants, mountain plants from all over the world, they have to be hardy. If they're tolerant for us, I mean, yes, there are people in parts of the country who will have a problem growing some of the things that we grow because they won't have quite the same rainfall as we do normally, although it's been a wet winter for all of us, hasn't it? Um, our specialities tend to be things like the small primulas we grow, um, a range of Roscoe's, which are hardly relative of ginger. So the Roscoe's come from the Himalayas in China. Um, they are related to ginger, named in honor of William Roscoe um, in around about 1812. So we grow a wide range of those, wide range of both Asiatic and European primulas, dwarf rhododendrons, conifers, saxifrages, really quite a wide range of things. But um, in some ways I could sort of say they're the things that are less commercial, but at the same time, that's what we make a living out of. They're the plants that you won't see in every garden centre. So we grow a wide range of the more unusual things, but they're the things that give me a buzz because I go out in the morning and I just want to see the new growth growing on things and the flowers coming on things. And at this time of the year in the spring, well, we're looking forward every day to something new coming into growth. So the anemones, the dodecathians, the primulas, it'll be another sort of month or two before the Roscoe's are in growth, but they'll then start flowering about the end of May, beginning of June, and many of those will be in flower through till September as well. It's lovely to hear your enthusiasm. That, that is what it's about. So let's look at some of those. So what, what are we talking about? Your ro Roscoe's are Tell a me a bit about them. Roscoe's are a hardy relative of ginger. Um, they're rather sort of orchid-like with their flowers. Um, so you get a range of different colours of them. So some of the species like Roscoe cordyloides will start flowering around about the end of May, beginning of June. Turn that so over, we it, can it's see. a rhizome plant. So at this time of the year, the rhizomes are dormant, but you can just about oh, see yeah, the shoots. Just showing the buds there, are on the top, it? and these are flowering-sized rhizomes. So plant them two to three inches below the surface in a fairly rich but well-drained soil, and that will be flowering by June this year. And then next year, if that's got two shoots on it this year, next year it'll have four shoots. The year after eight shoots, the year after sixteen shoots, they'll reliable, reliably double up in a year, so you get good clumps. The individual flowers, and that's a very pale yellow one, raw silk, um, but they don't produce a mass of flower at any one time, they, but they'll flower for a period of weeks and weeks and weeks. And then there are later flowering forms, and we've got red ones, um, striped ones, Harvington Polly from the Harvington stable of breeders. Um, that's a lovely white one with a pink bottom lip. Again, we can just about see the, the shoots coming. That won't be flowering till around about July, July, August, um, but good, strong growing, strong, strong growing form. Um, so They're quite a series um, related to gingers. So as I say, you get these rather sort of orchid-like flowers um, that are very good in herbaceous borders, and rock garden containers. And what you, what you said is true is a lot of people will have never, ever come across them. A lot of people want to come across these because for the big sort of commercial growers that are growing the plants for the garden Somewhere. centres that we go into, they can't grow enough of them. We grow around about a hundred different named varieties of these that all have to be grown by division. And doubling, doubling up in a year for a gardener, if you've got two shoots one year, four shoots the next eight, that sounds great. But from my point of view, as That's a small a nursery, if I want to sell yeah. a thousand of these, I've got to keep a thousand. Whereas a wholesale nursery wants to grow a thousand or something from seed from just one big stock plant. They want something that they can grow, that they can take loads of cuttings from, or just collect a lot of seed and grow a lot. We're into the other end, the other extreme of things where if something doubles up in a year, and there's another rare thing there, thing called Weldenia candida. Weldenia candida is a member of the Comalineacea, related to Tradescantias and things like that. Very thick fleshy roots. You can just see the shoots going on the top of that now. Yep, that has wonderful glistening white flowers on a sort of really almost flat rosette of dark green leaves. 
monotypic genus. There is only one of them. It comes from Mexico and Guatemala um, in the volcanic mountains. Um, so it wants very rich but well-drained soil. It doesn't like to be wet in the winter, so lots of gravel in the soil. Um, the individual flowers on that only last one day. So you get new flowers every day. Flowers for weeks and weeks and weeks, but something which we're lucky if that will even double in a year. Um, so if we sell 10 or 20 of that in a year, that's a good year. Garden centres, well, how many they garden centres in the country? You know, no. uh, even a, a, you know, if somebody produced that, there wouldn't even be one per garden centre. Now, the, the thing, that, talking to growers, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have a look at these because you, can, you raise your premiums, but what you've just said is, is quite important because what people don't realise is that how long it takes to grow plants, uh, to bulk them up, Yes, the, gar the, garden the, centers, isn't it? the garden centres will basically be stopped by the wholesale growers who can grow things fairly fast. But an event like this that the Alpine Garden Society have put on with specialist nursery growers from around the country, we've got people here from Scotland, from the Scottish borders, us from the North Pennines, people from North Wales, people from Lincolnshire. The nurseries have come from, from far and wide really to sell their plants and they're the people who have bred the plants, they know the plants, they've, they've grown them, they know they can advise the customers so we can actually advise the customers what will hopefully grow in their garden um, to give them pleasure throughout the year but yes it's a slow business it's taken us years I've been in business for 50 years now since we started the nursery um, I should be retired but I'm not um, and he, a series like the Lindum Primulas um, here which are bred by Drina and Martin Thompson down in Lincolnshire and you know they're not all the same there's 10 varieties in that train, 10 varieties in that train, 10 varieties in that train. So we've got 30 odd different ones there alone. The saxifrages, we've got nearly 20 different ones um, just in, in a trail like that. So all slightly different saxifrages, white ones, pink ones, yellow ones, these lovely little cushion saxifrages. Ideal in um, small rock gardens, troughs, containers. I mean, after all, a lot of modern housing, we've got smaller gardens. But if you want it, you can get a lot of variety of alpines in a small area because they're so choice and, uh, and small and compact. It doesn't make them difficult to grow. They're perfectly hardy. They grow up in the mountains in, in Europe, in the Alps. Nobody's going there and protecting them in the winter or anything. So they are tough, they're hardy. And if you really do a little bit of research in your plants, it's not just the joy and the pleasure that you get from the flowers. It's a little bit of sort of where they come from. So we've got plants from the European Alps. Um, we've got corridors from northern China. Um, we've got saxifrage, completely different sort of saxifrage from Japan. So you can have the world in your back garden just in a container. There you are. That's some um, interesting growing from Heartside Nurseries Garden. www.plantswithaltitude.co.uk Highest nursery in the country, Plants with Altitude.